In this tutorial, we'll explain how to create a basic show from a blank light controller. We'll not delve into overwhelming detail, but after watching this tutorial, we'll be able to program a show with the Infinity Chimp light controller. Thank you for your interest in the Infinity Chimp Light Controller and welcome to this tutorial. To learn more about the various parts of the Infinity Chimp Light Controller keyboard and screen, you are advised to watch tutorial 1 and 2, Hardware and Software. This tutorial is based on software version 1.3. If your chimp uses a different software version, the functions or user interface may be different. Please note that we refer to the chimp hardware keys as keys and the GUI software keys as buttons in this tutorial. Create new show. When the chimp starts up, we see the following start screen. The chimp displays the show that was open last. You can select this show, but with this tutorial, we'll start with a new blank show. Press New Show. This will display the on-screen keyboard with which you can give the show a name. We'll call this show Quick Start Guide. You can also connect a USB keyboard. Press OK on the touch screen to confirm. The chimp will now display the programming view. Patch Fixtures Before you can program a show, fixtures need to be patched. Press Setup followed by Patch in the Setup menu. Then press Add Fixtures. This will display a pop-up. The chimp has a factory library based on the Atlabase database, which contains more than 17,500 fixtures. You can, however, also edit fixtures or create them using the Integrated Fixture Builder. In this tutorial, we'll select a fixture from the factory library by pressing the Add Type from Factory Library button. We'll then see three filter selection screens from where we can select the desired fixture and mode. The default here is the generic dimmer. We can patch this by pressing OK on the touch screen. You'll then be asked how many fixtures you want to patch. We'll choose eight fixtures, then press Next. On this screen, you can set the DMX address and the universe. This can be done manually. But for our first show, we'll select Auto Patch and Universe 1. Now press Finish. The chimp has patched the eight 16-bit dimmers to the first free addresses as one block. The Infinity Chimp Light Controller gives us the option of patching more fixtures or stopping. We want to patch more fixtures, so we'll press Add More. We also want to add another fixture from the library. Press Add Type from Factory Library again. We can search the list manually, but the Factory Library also has a helpful search function, so let's use the keyboard to enter a search term. We'll type M3000 and press Enter. The chimp then returns all of the fixtures that it has found containing M3000. In this case, it's the Showtech Spectral M3000 with all available modes. AR2.Z, a personality of the M3000, is selected. We can confirm by pressing OK. Then we enter eight fixtures under Fixture Count, followed by Next. Universe 1 and Auto Patch are already selected, so we'll press Finish to confirm. The final fixtures that we want to patch in this tutorial are the Infinity IS-100 fixtures. So let's press Add More again.
we'll select Add Type from Factory Library and enter IS-100 in the search field again. The search function displays all results that contain IS-100. From these, we'll select IS-100 from Infinity in Advanced Mode and press OK. Again, we'll choose 8 fixtures by pressing 8 and Next. To complete the patch, we just need to press Finish. We've finished patching and we can press Close. The Infinity Chimp Light Controller now provides an overview of all patched fixtures. ArtNet Enable In this tutorial and all other tutorials for the Chimp Light Controller, we'll be using ArtNet to control the Capture Visualizer. The default setting on the Chimp is with the ArtNet disabled. Press Input slash Output and check the Enable ArtNet box so that the Capture Visualizer works. Create Master Faders To create master faders, we need to return to the programmer. For this, press Programming in the top toolbar. We'll start by creating a master dimmer and a speed master. Press one of the master fade labels at the bottom right in the bottom toolbar. A pop-up will appear in which the desired function can be assigned to the master fader. We do this by selecting that function. In this tutorial, we'll select Grand Master and we'll do this again to create a Speed Master. Create Groups In this first show with the Chimp Light Controller, we'll be using groups. There are two ways of assigning fixtures to a group. We need to select the fixtures that we want to create a group for, one by one. The first way of creating the group for this selection is via the touchscreen. Start by pressing Rec and then the desired fixture group in the split widget group. The chimp automatically generates a name based on the fixture name. Press Enter to confirm. The group is then created. For the second method, we need to make an even followed by an odd selection. Press the Selection button in the bottom toolbar. The GUI will now show all options for the Selection tool in the bottom toolbar. We'll select Even slash Odd. We can now create the group using a syntax code. Press Rec followed by Group and then the desired group number 2 followed by Enter. The chimp will automatically propose a group name. Let's change the name to Even. Now we'll repeat the process by pressing Selection and Even slash Odd again. The selection is inverted. Now the syntax code again, Rec Group, followed by the desired group number 3, and then Enter. We'll change the name to Odd and confirm with OK. For these tutorials, we'll repeat this for the groups Performer and M3000, as you can now see in the GUI. Creating Presets We'll use presets to help us make our first show. To create a preset, we need to select the desired fixtures with the Group buttons. We'll create a 100% output preset at Full Syntax to give the fixtures 100% intensity. Press Rec and select the desired preset in the Preset Split widget. We'll call this preset 100 and confirm with Enter. Now we'll create a 50% output preset. We will turn the first encoder down to 50% then press Rec again, followed by the desired Preset button. We'll call this 50 and confirm with Enter. We can create presets for every attribute. We've prepared these already. Position Presets Color Presets Gobo Presets Beam 
In our case, focus presets. Using presets. We are now going to create a setting and record it in a queue. Note that if you change the information in a preset, all queues that use that preset will also change. As such, we are recommending using presets when recording queues as it helps to save programming time. We are now going to select all IS-100s with the help of the split widget group. We'll give this 100% intensity using the preset that we just created. Press Position next to the attributes and we'll use the left preset. Then select the Even group in the Split Widget group and press Right in the Preset Split Widget. We can see the result here. We'll now select the attribute Color and use the color preset Purple. Note that Odd is still selected, so we need to select the Even group to make this purple as well. Press the Gobo attribute and select Preset Gobo 2. We'll select the Odd group and select Preset Gobo 3. We'll then go to the Beam attribute and select Preset Audience. Creating Queues and Queue Lists we have now created the desired output with the help of presets. We can now record these in a queue. Press Rec and select the desired fader label to link the recorded queue. We can now give the queue a name with the help of the on-screen keyboard or a connected USB keyboard. We'll call this queue IS100 and confirm with Enter. We have created a queue. To create a queue list, we can add multiple queues. For a second queue, we need to create another position and use the presets position again. Select the Even group and select the left preset, then select the Odd group and select the right preset. We now need to press Rec and select the same fader label again. A pop-up will appear containing a number of options for recording this queue. Select Append as a new queue to record this as the second queue and to create a queue list. We now have the option of giving this queue a name, but we'll skip over it and press Enter. We have now recorded two queues in precisely the same way. One queue for dimming the front lights, and one queue with different colors for the M3000s. The queue fader works as a dimmer by default, but can be assigned to many other functions. We'll look at this in the section Playback, Fader and Executor Options. We'll now use the three playback faders to activate the queues and see the result of our programming work. Queue List Settings At the end of the tutorial, we'll show you how you can access the settings for a queue list and how to assign a speed master to a queue list. We'll now press Open, followed by the fader label of the queue that we want to open. The content area now switches to Playback View and opens the queue or queue list. The queue list is now triggered manually but we'll assign this to Speedmaster 1. Select both manual labels. We'll then press the Set button and a Select Queue Trigger. Selection menu is opened. Now select the desired trigger. In our case, this is Speedmaster 1. As we already assigned a Speedmaster 1 at the start of the tutorial, the queue list begins to play immediately at the set speed. We'll now open the M3000 queue. To do this, press the Open button and the desired fader label. For the M3000 queue list, we want to specify trigger times. Select All Trigger Time Labels and then press the Set button. We can now enter the desired time. In our case, this is one second. 
press enter to confirm. The M3000 cue list starts to play and displays a color pattern. Now use Speedmaster 1 to modify the speed of the movement. We have shown you how you can use the Infinity Chimp to create an impressive show within a matter of minutes. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Infinity strives to keep its Chimp related tutorials and software information up to date. Keep an eye on our social media channels for the latest information on the Chimp.